I can sing a true song about myself, tell of my troubles, how in days of tribulation I often endured a time of hardship, how I have harbored bitter sorrow in my heart and often learned that ships are homes of sadness. Wild were the waves when I often took my turn, the arduous night watch standing at the prow while the boat tossed near the rocks. My feet were afflicted by cold, fettered in frost, frozen chains. There I sighed out the sorrows seething round my heart, a hunger within tore at the mind of the sea-weary man. He who lives most prosperously on land does not understand how I, careworn and cut off from my kinsmen, have, as an exiled, endured a winter on the icy sea, hung round with icicles, hail, showers, flu. I heard nothing there but the sea booming, the ice-cold wave, at times the song of the swan. The cry of the gannet was all my gladness, the curl of the curlew, not the laughter of men, the mewing gull, not the sweetness of mead. There storms beat the rocky cliffs, the icy feathered tern answered them, and often the eagle, dewy winged, screeched overhead. No protector could console the cheerless heart. Wherefore he who is used to the comforts of life and proud and flushed with wine suffers little hardship living in the city will scarcely believe how I, weary, have had to make the ocean paths my home. The night shadow grew long. It snowed from the north. Frost fettered the earth. Hail fell on the ground, coldest of grain. But now my blood is stirred that I should make trial of the mountainous streams, the tossing salt waves. My heart's longings always urge me to undertake a journey, to visit the country of a foreign people far across the sea. On earth, there is no man so self-assured, so generous with his gifts, or so bold in his youth, so daring in his deeds, or with such a gracious Lord that he harbors no fears about his seafaring as to what the Lord will ordain for him. He thinks not of the harp, nor of receiving rings, nor of rapture in a woman, nor of worldly joy, nor of anything but the rolling of the waves. The seafarer will always feel longings. The groves burst with blossom, towns become fair, meadows grow green, the world revives. All these things urge the heart of the eager man to set out on a journey, he who means to travel far over the ocean paths. And the cuckoo, too, harbinger of summer, sings in a mournful voice, boding bitter sorrow to the heart. A prosperous man knows not what some men endure who tread the paths of exile to the end of the world. Wherefore, my heart leaps within me, my mind roves with the waves over the whale's domain. It wanders far and wide across the face of the earth, returns to me again, eager and unsatisfied. The solitary bird screams, irresistible, urges the heart to the whale's way 
over the stretch of the seas. So it is that the joys of the Lord inspire me more than this dead life ephemeral on earth. I have no faith that the splendors of this earth will survive forever. There are three things that, until one occurs, are always uncertain. Illness or old age or the sword's edge can deprive a doomed man of his life. Wherefore, each man should strive before he leaves this world to win the praise of those living after him, the greatest fame after death, with daring deeds on earth against the malice of the fiends, against the devil, so that the children of men may later honour him and his fame live afterwards with the angels forever and ever in the joy of life eternal among the heavenly host. Days of great glory in the kingdom of earth are gone forever. Kings and kaisers and gold-giving lords are no longer as they were when they wrought deeds of greatest glory and lived in the most lordly splendor. This host has perished joys have passed away. Weaklings thrive and hold sway in the world, enjoy it through their labors. Dignity is laid low. The earth's flower ages and withers, as now does every man throughout this middle world. Old age comes visiting, his face grows pale, Grey-haired, he mourns. He knows his former friends, the sons of princes, have been placed in the earth. Then, when life leaves him, his body cannot taste sweetness or feel the sharpness of pain. Lift a hand or ponder in its mind. Though a man may strew a grave with gold, Bury his brother amongst the dead with the many treasures he wished to take with him. The gold a man amasses while still alive on earth is no use at all to his soul, full of sins in the face of God's wrath. Great is the fear of God. Through him the world turns. He established the mighty plains, the face of the earth and the sky above. Foolish is he who fears not his Lord. Death catches him unprepared. Blessed is the humble man. Mercy comes to him from heaven. God gave man a soul because he trusts in his strength.